The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. And welcome to my brother, my brother, me, and advice show from the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweetest, sweetest baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Uh, and today we're celebrating the discovery of a new mammalian. The launch. Can we call it the... Today is the much anticipated release. <laughs> you've, of... been, you've seen the trailers, and today we are finally ready to launch this is the street date this is the mammal street date a lot of people have been asking what's this mammal gonna do for me is he gonna produce lots of sweet sweet low-cal gluten-free milk that i can that i can buy at the whole foods maybe Uh, we haven't drank this bitch's milk yet will he be bluetooth compatible so uh before the program we were discussing different topics that we could discuss in this opening segment uh and i said there was a new mammal in the mix. Griffin had heard about it. Travis hadn't. Nope. At which point he insisted he didn't want to hear about it because he wanted to guess. Now, just to be clear, <laughs> there's an <laughs> undiscovered species of animal unknown to humanity and Travis is, <laughs> is going <laughs> to guess. Travis should, Travis should be like uh, an epidemiologist or something. Like, Travis, cancer. Get, get, can let's spit some fire at us? Just let's just. Well, I'm gonna start you with cancer, and let's just see what you got. Uh, let me guess. Let me. You, okay, hold on. All have that. Have tried? I need one. I just need one bit of information. Okay. Where was it discovered? It was discovered in Ecuador or Colombia. I think. Uh, let me mention real quick before we uh-huh. say anything else. This is a rare evening recording, uh, and at least two thirds of the podcast have been drinking, so it's gonna be a good one. But just for some context there. Oh, that's that, was, that was one of us just blew in our breathalyzer. Yeah. And that was like, don't <laughs> drive. That's the chime that stands for funny. That's Keys, funny. please, hand them to me. Record. You're not good to go. I am going to say a barefooted monkey. You're not, you're not so far off, although I guess you are super far off, because we did, we lowered the phylum down to mammal. I no, but I'm just, I'm going to say, when I say barefooted, not like it's not wearing shoes. I mean, like, it's a monkey with, like, B-E-A-R feet. Did you get that spelling with right? Bear, yeah, with bear-like feet. Uh, what we got is the Olinguito. It is a raccoon with the uh-huh. face of a teddy bear. All right, first of all, Wait, first fuck of all, you. We, have been, we have been getting sold a fucking false bill of goods all day by the science, by the Christian science monitor. That's like, oh, look at this adorable thing. I don't want to. I don't want to throw shade at this new mammal, but I'm not really feeling it. Like it's not fair. It's not all that cute. And look at those fucking claws. I think I'm like. I'm fucking afraid of this. Hold on. So into the Olinguido right now, Travis. Let me know what you think because I think it's uh, okay. fully. Oh cold. Jesus! Oh Christ! You're scared. Sounds like Travis. Look at his eyeballs. Are you kidding me? That's not the face of a teddy bear. That's the face of the devil. It's you the know, face of a teddy bear that wants to kill you. Yeah, and it's the, the face of a teddy bear that goes, I'll leave me alone with your kids. Like It'll in my fine. unproduced sequel to Child's Play, Cubby's Play, where oh, a teddy God. bear comes to life. I hate to be disparaging against any any mammal, especially one that, like, a mammal really needs a few months on the market for people to, like, really put the put the wheels to the road, really test this mammal out. But I think this whole linguito's got a butter face. He does. Could they not have picked one picture where he wasn't staring dead-eyed into the camera? It does make you wonder how we missed it for so long. He <laughs> is literally looking directly at the camera. And what we up? have two pictures. Yeah. How'd that happen? They said it was hiding in plain sight. And you know what? Science, what are we fucking paying you guys for? Somebody opened, like, their bread cabinet and it was like, oh, shit. Honey, did you remember to feed the only Guido today? Uh, no, let me just... Uh, sh- have we fucking filed this dude yet? <laughs> Honey, yes. have we put him in the encyclopedia yet? 
in in the in the scientist's defense, every time you walk past an old linguito, it says, "I'm an eagle." <laughs> so it's, that does. Uh, I, anyway, uh, we have lots of people to help. And I, I don't think I, you're saying the animal's name. You make it sound like a delicious Italian pasta dish. Olinguito. <laughs> it's Spanish. It's it's because it's derived from. It's a, it's mm. a smaller version of uh, of John Leguizamo. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a Leguizamo. Uh, someone is playing. Someone's no, playing just, Guess Who with this podcast, and with that, they just figured out who's drunk. It's a small version <laughs> of an Olingo, so an Olinguito, because okay. Olinguito is the Spanish. Anyway, let's hope people. That's why Judge Lancito means the small judge. <laughs> small judge. <laughs> Little Lance. <laughs> Whoa. I would watch a cartoon show called Little Judge Lancito. <laughs> Little Ito. Hey, it's my buddy, K Tito. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I don't know how to seal the deal on the dance floor. Whether or not I'm a terrible dancer is up for debate, but I have a good time when I'm out on the dance floor by myself or with a buddy. The problem is when I catch a girl's attention and begin dancing with her, I lose my momentum. Where am I supposed to look while I dance with her? Do I strike up a conversation? Should I ask her if she wants a drink? I just can't seal the deal, and after one song, they all leave. It's from Gmail. Mm. I can, I can mm. answer mm. one of those mm. questions real quick and easy. Do not strike up a conversation. No, no, even no. if you're the best, if you're Savion Glover out on that dance floor, you can't be like, yeah. hey, sup, just stick to the dancing, I think. That's, so you from around the, here? Boom, 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 boom. You love this jam? <laughs> that's like the international language of love is, you know, the salsa. Also, don't start singing along and stand in place, because I did that for way too many middle school dances, and it does not pay off. Oh, my God. That's where, like, I'm realizing that I just realized I don't know how to dance, and so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna kind of groove. You're like, oh, fuck, I'm on this floor. What else can I do to music? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Going <laughs> I'm already wearing my show choir sequin vest. I wore my show choir sequin vest to homecoming because it's the most formal piece of apparel I own. Now, now I never did that in high school, but in middle school, I was, uh, I, uh, I was a. Uh, what's the opposite of a smooth criminal? I was at, I was a. You're was a wet a, bandit. <laughs> I was a wet bandit on the dance I, floor. I guys. don't think. I think that's apple. I think that's just a middle school. I think that's the opposite of a smooth criminal. Is a middle schooler. I don't think. I was a had, middle schooler out there, no, you guys. Nobody had play. I think. Do you know that um, Michael? They just uh, discovered that Michael Jackson had a patent on special shoes with a uh, a small hook in them that he would hook onto pegs uh, extending up from the dance floor. That he would use to do his patented smooth criminal lean. He oh, has that's a bullshit. patent. Literally, his patented smooth criminal lean. He has a patent on it. There's a God, patent the pat- to Mr. Michael Jackson. I want to lean out. I have this way of leaning. Sure. Hand me my stamp. Doing Ben well, Franklin proud. The problem is, is after that, anytime anyone leans, they owe Michael Jackson $20. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hey, what are you reading? Do, careful. Fuck. <laughs> I'll hand you the book and you can see. You just <laughs> don't bend over. Uh, I, I think a good thing to do is to look at the person, but maybe not in their eyes, but not at their their body, necessi- any features of their body. That look at their left look ear. At. Just sort of like you're appreciating their dancing. Like you're nodding like, yeah, that's these are good dances. You're maybe look like, at their hair with like a slightly disgusted look on your face. <laughs> no, don't do that. Like, look like a nod, like, you are dancing. Because I think that's all anybody really wants, is they want to know that they're dancing. And then when the song finishes, that's when you capitalize and say, like, hey, do you want a drink or something? Like, you don't do it mid-song. Unless it's the fucking... That's the problem with a great DJ, is because if he keeps dropping jams, I'll be out there all night. What mm-hmm. if every song he plays, I, I raise my hands to the ceiling I'm like, this is my jam. Listen, if he's a good DJ, he'll throw a clunker in there every four songs so someone can get some. And then he sees a love connection connection happening. He's like, uh-huh. I'm going to toss on a long play track. I'm going to toss yeah. on the Decemberist five-part sea shanty ballad, The Tane, which lasts for 19 <laughs> minutes. These kids are going to love this shit. And they're going to be out there long enough to like find out everything about each other. Did you, uh, Daniel, did you fire that DJ yet? <laughs> <laughs> No, what did he do this time? Uh, you're not going to believe it. He played the Tane. Oh, man. Did he cut out the verse with the creepy little woman singing? No, he left that verse in. Four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes about cholera. Shit. I love the accordion just... solo. Did you really? Yeah, I really got the people fucking going. 
He just lifts up one cup of his earphones. I can't stop it. It's a cycle. It's a song cycle. (laughs) If I stop it at part four, you're not going to get to the part where the sailor redeems himself. And you'll feel empty inside all night. Do you want that? You're not going to get it. If you're at a club, you're you're feel empty inside all night anyway. (laughs) A lot of times people are just there to dance. You got to remember that. And I think that that's a sacred exchange. But I, I was going to have to know from the dancing. I think don't you think you get a good idea from the dancing what the opposite party is there to do? Like, I don't think of it as like a matchmaking thing though. I think of it yeah. like every time people dance at a wedding or at a club, they are doing it so that they can go home confident in the fact that they just danced. No, yeah, I agree. I, I, this is I what completely I'm saying agree. I think that I think that you should walk away just being like, hey, I danced with a stranger. That's a huge win. That's mm. what I think you're actually I, I think some of the hang up that you might be having is your the question you've got in your mind is how do I transition this dance into like uh, a, a relationship and maybe you should just transition it into a dance like another dance well that's kind of why twerking was invented wasn't it because it kind of cuts out all the confusion it cuts out the middleman hey guys hold but- on one second Charles has to go twerk <laughs> <laughs> he has this tick where he can't hear the word twerk <laughs> Without going to fucking door. If I don't twerk on every doorknob in this house, the devil's gonna come in. Sorry, go on. <laughs> How was? Are you? Every, did you are you okay? okay? Yeah, I just had to kill like the fucking biggest bug that was running across my yeah, floor. That, yeah, yeah, likely yeah, story. Sure. You um, kill him with your butt. <laughs> did you kill him with your butt in like a rhythmic up and down <laughs> manner? Did you put on some Miley, one of Miley Cyrus's new songs, and then just like go to town on that bug? I did. Okay. The, uh, and then we parted as friends. <laughs> and another word was not said between us. Yeah, focus on the dancing rather than the relationship building. I think you're going to have a much better time. If something's going to happen, it'll happen. But maybe just focus on the dance. Just have fun. Yeah. Just don't worry about a relationship. I'm going to put some whiskey in this, I think. How about a Yahoo? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> that was awful. <awesome. laughs> um... This Yahoo was sent in by Megan. Thank you, Megan. It's by Jack S. Who asks, I'm finally rich. Now what? <laughs> I've spent all this time working 80-hour work weeks. Is that, is that fucking possible? Yeah. Yeah, dog. Trust me, it is. Uh, <clears throat> Sydney works those sometimes, too. Used to when she was an intern. Not so much anymore. Um. I've spent- I just want to hear to hear for her folks. I work as hard as a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think all- Justin quote uh, Travis works as hard as a doctor. I've spent all this time working eighty hour work weeks, dealing with coworkers and bosses I despise, and now I finally made my personal goal. What the heck do I do now? I'm already set to tell my boss off, but what comes after? I have no friends. I wanted a relationship, but they never understood that I wanted to get work out of the way while I was still young and physically able to enjoy life. Now I'm alone, and I don't know what I want. I'm not a mean guy. I've just found it hard to be in social situations. What do people usually want? I've never done a lot of things. Never even played a video game. Any suggestions? And how can I get back to dating? Through new friends? The idea of speed dating terrifies me, BT Dubs, so none of that, please. Coming soon from Bradley Cooper. Hi, I'm Bradley this Cooper. Sounds like, this sounds like such a setup for a movie of like, he worked so hard, he had no time for a family. I'm rich. Wait, this and is like 8,000 movies. I'm rich and super humble, and I have a very good face. What's up? <laughs> what do I do now? My penis is super great. I've, I've heard lots of great things about my super great penis. I have, I have, I have a Jay Leno-esque amount of cars. What to, what to do? Got a totally open cow? Got a private plane? <laughs> Stumpers. Can I get one of those board, one of those books from the library? It's like thirty things to do on a rainy day. Can't open a lemonade stand. <laughs> tricky, tricky. I already got lemonade out of the way. I already did lemonade, so I started. <laughs> so I got rich. I invented lemonade. Nothing left to do but drown myself, I guess. <laughs> but embrace the sweet cool release penis, of death. If it weren't for the fact that I'd be robbing the world of this cool penis, I'd do it without hesitation. Stupid, buoyant penis. <laughs> it floats to the top of the lake like one of those keychains you put on uh, on your on like keys <laughs> that floats. <laughs> Great metaphor. What's this fucking guy going to do? Maybe play well, a I video think- game. I, it no, sounds like okay. he's got a very specific goal in life. Listen, sir. Sir, hi, it's me, Justin here. 
if you want to get back in the dating scene, I have a great step <laughs> one for you. Don't get into video games because those two, that's not a path to one. The path of one is not a path to the other. These are two very different paths you're staring down the barrel of. I um, do, however, I really like the philosophy that he's looking at the world and I got work out of the way. Like, I didn't know you could do that. I did the work thing. I didn't know you could compress it all. Like, instead of working, like, 30 years of 40-hour weeks, sure. you can just do, like, 10 it's, of 80. It's the, fucking, it's the fucking Minkus career plan, isn't it? Or it's like you graduate high school by the time you're uh-huh. 10, and it's like, now I can just fucking lamp for five years until it's time for freshman year. Travel to yeah. Europe, see some, see some shit. Go to Antigua. And I think traveling is the only thing you can do, or maybe be a private eye, or maybe travel the world using your great w- riches to like solve crimes. I feel like that'd be pretty rewarding. Or, ooh, Thomas Crown it. What's that mean? I didn't oh, see that. Oh, so rich, so rich needs a thrill. Yeah, he doesn't feel anything art. anymore unless he has sex with Rene Russo. <laughs> I don't want to pay for uh, like you have to be so. I don't think this guy is like Bruce Wayne wealthy. I think he just doesn't have to sweat the money game. No, no, no. Anymore. Yeah, I think I think he's probably he's got... rich enough that he has work out of the way. Right, but if you live if you live a conservative, self sustaining lifestyle, you can knock that out in like two hundred and fifty large. <laughs> he has basically skipped to being an eighty year old man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If if someone comes to sell him magazines, he's gonna tell him he's on a fixed budget. Mm-hmm. I mean that that's the life <laughs> that this guy has painted for himself. Um, I mean, you work eighty hours at Arby's long enough, you'll you you will have amassed a surprising amount of wealth in beef. In they're not going to pay overtime. Roasted at beef. Arby's. They're not going to let anybody work. No, there's no way hours. they're going to get approval. Yeah, I guess that's true. They got to reach out to Mr. Arby and be like, "Hey, can we work I, Timmy longer?" No, I really don't know what you would do. I mean, I, I mean, you got Swim the work thing out of the way. Would you? I would probably Are read a lot or say I'm going to read a lot. And probably play video games. Swimming mm. in it is like, there is nothing. There's nothing grosser you could fill a pool with. I'll I'll go ahead and say, it could if it was if it was human excrement, you would at least know who had who it had been processed by. You would at least know the source. Money is like a, a hundred different people's germs. And I'm gonna jump back um, to say that you think poop is better when you know who it comes from. That's never been a consolation to me <laughs> oh this is steve's oh, steve's oh yeah. no problem that guy eats right he seems clean <laughs> he eats a lot of kale i see what he eats he's treating himself good all right this is this is either this question is either a perfectly concentrated story of how wealth is meaningless mm-hmm. and how true happiness is found um, in love and from everyone else, or it's a story about how wealth is the only important thing, and then once you get that, everything else is pretty much bullshit. May, may I also throw this out? Okay. Is it possible that this is written by like a twenty-four-year-old kid mm-hmm. who has like thirty thousand dollars in the bank? That's goes, a fucking rich. shit. Lo- how old is the kid? He's like twenty-four. That's. I'm, that's you may as well have just said he has infinity dollars in his. That's super what I'm bank. saying, and he goes, "I'm rich." Uh, time to, and he fucking is that. in this economy. <laughs> think of how many Biebers that could buy him. Here's the reason I think that it's from the context clues of telling, saying that he's ready to like tell off his boss. Yeah, it's yeah. like no forty year old responsible man with two hundred and fifty mil in the bank is like, "Fuck my boss." You're saying he's a thirty. I'm gonna tell J P Wentworth where to stick it. <laughs> I got um, instruction cash was, settlement right here. When I was in my mid twenties, I got my first full time job uh, at the. I mean, it was my first full time job. It was my first salaried position uh, at the the uh, Ironton Tribune. Mm-hmm. My starting salary was nineteen thousand dollars, and butt. I remember looking at that number, thinking, "How am I gonna spend nineteen thousand dollars?" And you realize that it was the answer to that question was you will spend it as if your life depends on it. <laughs> right. Because it very, the very, very turned much out to be does. food. <laughs> you will spend it instantly is the answer. Right. 
Uh, we have a very special uh, uh, guest question from a, for a celebrity guest question, which uh, we do well never. We did pretty it once regularly, pretty, pretty regularly, regularly, basically. Uh, from a friend of the show, I guess Jeff Canada. He is you had to have host. that, I guess, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess he's a friend of the show. I mean, now he's a friend of the show, certainly. Our friend, our dear, my dear friend, and soon to be yours, I'm sure, uh, Jeff Kanata, formerly of Totally Rad Show, soon to be of newest, latest, best, his upcoming program that I'm, I'm I think everybody's looking forward to. And uh, he's got a question for us, and I want to share it with you right now. Hello, Justin, Travis, and Griffin. I come to you because I love your show, I value your advice. And because Justin generously contributed cash money to my Kickstarter campaign. Let's be honest, it's mostly that third one. But I come to you at a giant crossroads in my life for, for some major, major advice. As you may know, I love loving things. I love loving love. I love love and I love women. But there is one particular woman I am in love with and I want to ask her to marry me. Luckily, she doesn't listen to the internets. She's not aware of it having audio yet. So don't tell her, but tell me, how should I do it as guys in various states of, of married and unmarried status? How should I do it? What will guarantee my her having said yes and my eventual happiness uh, and marital bliss? I look forward to hearing your question. I'll take it off the air. Uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. Jeff, it's a fine question. It's one we've all uh, dealt with. By we all, I mean the three of us. No, I think every, this, everybody, uh, it's, no, everybody at some point some in their life has proposed to some. And the answer, Jeff, is as big and showy and flashy as possible. Go on YouTube and search uh, wedding proposal, must see, like, like, share, subscribe with friends. And mm -hmm. then see which one has the most hits and then try and recreate it. Now, I know you're wondering, how am I going to get 50, 50 people into Disney World on a budget? And the answer is smuggling. You got to track down the guy in the Jeremy the Jackal suit, which is everyone's mm -hmm. favorite Disney character, and then use him. <laughs> he, was in, he was the bully in the Goofy movie, you guys. Yeah. Go on. Um, He's in Ben Knobs and Bruce 6 too. He's still Knob. <laughs> you get him, and you get. It's going to cost you quite a few um, Disney pesos, which mm -hmm. are only usable in Epcot. And uh, you're going to get 50 people in there. You're going to do a little. Well, uh, what they call a flash mob. Pick a Bruno Mars song at random. Pick any, mm -hmm. throw a dart at a Bruno Mars CD. Now throw that CD away and get a working one, because you, you <laughs> fucked that one up. Throw a dart at Bruno Mars and call your lawyer. You're gonna if you hit him, it's six more weeks of winter. <laughs> um, there's got to be a better, we have to develop some sort of meteorological technology. <laughs> <laughs> well, just let Bruno Mars make his mediocre music. Hey, fuck off. Who the fuck, fuck are you? you? Highly danceable. <laughs> that is Ted danceable. You leave me alone. <laughs> what? That's not a thing. Ted danceable? Yeah, everyone says that. Um, don't do any of the things that we've said so far um, for the past three and a half years. Um, you, you I, I, honestly, I don't think there's a person alive that wants, that has ever, like, received a proposal and gone like that wasn't there weren't nearly enough people watching it's got to be intimate right it's got to be like i it's got to be like i don't know 15 20 people tops watching you so you gotta charge you gotta charge for admission and really capitalize of, on this a lot of that depends though on how likely you think she is to say yes because if you're uh you're the man or woman in your life you're going to propose to them you you are worried that maybe they may be hesitant if you put them on blast like that with 30 to 40 people then i think that they're they're deaf they're not gonna and there's social pressure at that point yeah ooh ooh wait till you have a big public fight and then pull out the ring why? Because it's ri because it's really gonna cancel out all of like the fight that just happened. You're saying wait t for like 
wait till you fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like really bad. Yeah. And like get into like get into it and just express all all your anger in the situation. But then boom, engagement ring. Right? Cause then it's like it's like all that time that just happened before that didn't happen, didn't exist. You're just because yeah, it's wedding time. God, women are so fucking dumb. Shh, 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 no, shh, I, no, hey, look at this. Hey, hey, hey shh, shh, say, shut up. I'm going to say that women could pull that move on a dude, too. Look at this. I want to say women and men both get proposed to. It's 2013. And I'm saying people getting proposed to are dumb, not women. <laughs> okay. I'm judging all of humanity, Griffin. <laughs> there was I just hate a, everyone. <laughs> there was just like a three in a row chain of us putting each other on blast. <laughs> it's just like, hey, that thing you said was insensitive, and in pointing that out, I'm going to say a somewhat insensitive thing. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> insensitive, insensitivity, Ouroboros. <laughs> this is an insensitive snake eating its own tail. Jeff, privacy of your own home. Uh, just think about, what... it's got to, when I... It's got to be... When I was going to propose to Rachel and I was trying to think of the way to do it, for a while, my fucking plan, she was out of town and I was going to do it the, the night she got back from, from her business trip. And she got back, when she got back, I was going to pick her up in the airport in a limo and then like do it there. And it's going to be romantic with champagne. We we're going to play our favorite Bruno Mars song on the CD player. <laughs> the limo Bruno dri- Mars would be driving. The limo driver would actually be that great guy who drives the limo in How I Met Your Mother. And it was going to be perfect. And then I remembered like, I've never been in a fucking limo in my whole goddamn life. And I don't want like some stranger that I paid to be there. Like, eh. like getting his jimmies off in the front seat while I profess my eternal love you know what Did i mean you say getting his jiggies off <laughs> getting his jiggly puffs off in the front seat <laughs> while i'm doing my stuff no i i agree Griff, and the point griffin's trying to get to in a, in a roundabout time killing way don't let your driver masturbate in the front seat. <laughs> don't let anybody <laughs> masturbate if there's someone masturbating drive. at your proposal you dumb <laughs> fucked up somewhere <laughs> i let me I go back it's... over the plan Pick her up in the limo. Yeah, I did that. Get her at the airport. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Oh, let driver masturbate. Wrote it down, number three. <laughs> Pay driver extra to masturbate. Let me just scratch that off the list. I think you actually need um, you you need to consider the person and what they want. There's not a blanket answer we can give you. Like, in like maybe they case, don't want to masturbate it would in the front mean seat. a lot to Sydney to have friends and a family around, so... I did it at New Year's when there was a bunch of people there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, honestly, with Teresa, like both of our schedules were so hectic, but we just desperately wanted to be engaged, so it was a very casual thing. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I got you flowers, and I love you, and let's do this wedding thing we've been talking about for four years. Mm-hmm. And you could probably—I don't know who you are—you could probably do better than let's do this wedding thing. <laughs> um, no, I got down on one knee and I did a whole thing, but like, well, you know, we're both wicked we both... busy right now. Let's just let's just. <laughs> I don't know about you, but let's take a wedding nap. Listen, you're my sun and my moon or whatever, what the shit ever. And man, I don't know. Let's do this wedding thing. <laughs> Fuck it. You're the moon of my moon. <laughs> sun of my stars or something. I don't know. I don't watch Game of Thrones that closely. But <laughs> you're something or whatever. Marriage. Let's Thanks, do Jeff. this. Let's do this. Let's do this wedding thing. Uh, Let's do this fucking money thing and get paid. Hey, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Ring on a dildo. A ring on a dildo, Travis. That's exact. You took the words clean out of my mouth. Uh, okay. Hey, diddle, oh. diddle, put a dildo in the middle. Okay, there were like <laughs> 10 words that I hated in the past minute. Uh, Griffin may hate masturbation toys, but I am deep, deep into them. You like a sex flesh would pussy you, stroker? Would you say you wanna... that they're deep, deep into you? <laughs> you can get deep, deep into a firm pussy and ass masturbator oh. that's not me being vulgar that's a product name that's uh, trademark it, copyright that's trademark <laughs> firm pussy <laughs> firm pussy uh, extremechase.com is your home for all of this uh, delicious delicious sexual, sexual paraphernalia Don't. it doesn't matter if it looks like a creature from labyrinth Get it and fuck it. It doesn't matter if it looks like David Bowie. Put your dick in it. No, hold on. Who's that? You could probably get David Bowie's butthole as a sex toy. I bet. 
you can get an exact replica of Sasha Gray's, and this is a direct quote from their website, amazing pussy. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's singing a Supreme song. Oh, God! Fuck, that would suck. That would be, that would be, ama- <laughs> that would be amazing pussy. No, every, por- every porn plastic. director in the world just shot up in bed like, ah, oh, our career's <laughs> done. Our career is over. Our whole industry is shot now. Sexuality is sexual. No one's doing it. Children of men too. You just blast it off an EMP for boners. <laughs> oh. It would be an amazing pussy if it's saying some yeah, Supreme I'm not being That's incredible. some pig. Mm-hmm. Feed me Seymour. <laughs> That's what it looks like. You can feed it some dick, and you can do it for twenty percent off. Oh, God, using the code uh, sex. Not twenty percent off your dick. <laughs> you get to keep your whole dick. <laughs> Go use sex and You know what? I say dick. that, but I haven't been over all the product descriptions. I don't know. That's not a guarantee that you keep your whole dick with extremeshakes.com, but you can keep a little bit of that do re mi for yourself. 20%, in fact, using the coupon code SEXABUNGA. It's all waiting for you at extremerestraints.com. God, 20% is fucking crazy when you think about how much the people are saving. If you buy $500 worth of butt of those beads that you put in your butt, butt beads, that's mm-hmm. $400 you're paying. That's a whole $100 that you can spend on $100 more butt beads, which will in turn <laughs> get you like $118 more, but, 18 extra dollars of butt beads. You could just keep going and on it this. It sounds like a your... pyramid scheme. Well, no. It's, eventually, you're going to get diminishing returns, and it's like, yeah. I've, you're Papa, I've got you... 15 cents worth of butt beads. Butt beads, <laughs> butt beads. 15 cents for a fraction of butt beads. There's got to be something on this site I can fuck for a quarter. <laughs> oh, my God, there is. Oh, God, there is. Uh, ExtremeStrace.com is a website. They've, they're, like, the best friends we have in this whole world. Please so be nice go... to them. Don't scare them away. It's the only friends we've got. This is Aaron and Brian from Throwing Shade, and we would love to throw some shade on you this summer. Every Tuesday, we inject all sorts of news stories concerning ladies and gays with silliness and sexiness. Just in time for bikini season. Check us out on Max Fun under Throwing Shade. Okay, they're not stupid. No, I know, but yeah, they could well, be. Well, why would you spell it out like Well, that? because I was the spelling bee champion of the world. Farm wisdom. Farm, Farm wisdom. wisdom. Get your fork, it's not us, pork farm wisdom. I would like Griffin to read the first one, please. Um, I Here's the first one. I grew up on a racehorse farm. Oh, the most exciting life. I grew up on a racehorse Welcome farm. Welcome to the show, Paul Bear. The late <laughs> Paul Bear who joined us. When a veterinarian, ca- when a veterinarian castrates a racehorse, they throw the detached balls up on the roof of the barn for good luck. Pretty gross, Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. And I fact checked that. That's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. Old wives' tale. A hundred percent. Fuck you. There's no. <laughs> doesn't horse sperm sell for like hundo thousand on? You castrate a racehorse if it's having behavioral problems. That's. And then you you have like tell me though. Promise me. That if you are going to do this for behavioral problems, you definitely, definitely bring the horse out of the yard and make. <laughs> when you watch. throw its balls on the roof. Hey, come see this. <laughs> what? How did this old this wise? This is what you step? get for playing in my yard. How? Hey, Orb, come watch this. See if it's funny to eat my pocket. <laughs> Orb, come on. How? How did this? Fucking witchcraft. I can't imagine there was just a super lazy veterinarian, old timey. Have you never heard balls on the roof fast in the hoof? (laughs) I'm imagining like an 18th century veterinarian. (laughs) Like, ah, what do I, ah, fuck. What do I do with these? They're slippery. Maybe in the, maybe in the heat of a passionate horse crime, they, they cut off a ball, a horse's balls unwillingly and then had to dispose of the evidence. Chinkle, chinkle. Oh, God. Got his balls. What do we do now? Oh, fuck. You got to you gotta tie them on the back of your truck mm-hmm. so that they hang comically as though they're the truck's testicles. <laughs> it's very comical. Is that the implication? 
I believe so. I'm going to go back when I'm editing the podcast and find the minute mark where Travis said he was going to start adding whiskey to his beverage and then time <laughs> it out to now. And then we'll know, like, the porousness of his liver. What's the other farm wisdom? Uh, chickens play dead and fart through their mouths. <laughs> and that's from Jillian. It's the best Smiths album. I don't care what anybody says. It is the best. Don't. I don't want to get gross, but if we're talking about like just physiological stuff, don't human beings? I, I have heard, I have heard things come out of Travis's mouth that I'm uh, uh, like a hundred percent certain was a fart. I like <laughs> undoubtedly. I know you have, I know you have dyspepsia, and it's the thing you struggle with every day. But I'm saying that you, your shit's backwards. Do you think chickens play dead because they wish they were dead because they've been farting out their mouths? <laughs> Or do you think they play dead when someone's like, you smell that? Oh, <laughs> Can't be that dead um. chicken. <laughs> you know he's innocent. It smells like a, like a mouth fart. Couldn't be that guy. Oh, God, oh, God. He looks oh like God. he's been oh dead God, for weeks. Just go, 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 go. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to do it. It's going to taste so bad. Oh, God. I'm just going to pretend I'm dead. I'd like to see a new version of Charlotte's Web. Um, maybe the stage production where Charlotte's like, Wilbur, I have to make this, I have to make this web singing your praises so they keep you alive. And then chuckles the chicken, comes on, he's like, bah, 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 kill me. Bah. <laughs> cluck, 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 cluck. Oh, God. Uh. I was going to take this pig to the, to the county <laughs> fair, but I got a chicken to the mouth farts the alphabet. I mean, he's famous, but it doesn't seem like much of a life. <laughs> hey, I keep finding random sex toys in my yard. I live on a busy street, and over the past year, my wife and I have found multiple simulated penises of varying sizes and styles strewn throughout our yard, some making it as far as our backyard, which is approximately 30 feet from the road. <laughs> Drew Brees is the best disposing of a sex toy in your house. Uh, <laughs> is this some new tradition that high schoolers are participating in? Like finding porn in the woods? Or do I just live in a very kinky neighborhood that's from extremely restrained in Rochester? Do you know what it is? It's, a, it's the daily delivery from the Gaper Boy. <laughs> Arcade classic. Arcade classic. <laughs> Gaper boy thrown in jail for breaking too many windows with giant ticks. <laughs> I would just like to see you come out on your lawn and like see another one. You look up and you just have that neighbor across the street sipping his coffee with his open robe. He's going, what's up? What's up? Check your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Some treats back there. The we worst Easter egg hunt ever. Uh -huh. He just keeps hoping one of them will find purchase in your soil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blossom. He'll know. He'll know. Um, yeah, I mean, this sounds... So So we started with teepeeing, right? And then teepeeing ended up being way too easy to clean up, so then, so then teens started forking. And then I guess that the, the sort of, like, physical toll that forking takes on you was no longer enough, and so they have now just started putting dicks in the yard. And it's not hard to pick a dick up and, like, throw it away or put it wash it off in the dishwasher and then put it in your secret drawer in your in your vegetable taxes box but i i you know it takes a lot out of your mind when you don't know where it came from you know what i mean i'm a little confused like i don't i don't get the implication of the prank like i put this on your yard like that's it like that's the yeah but then they the have to then they have to touch it right it's like a it's like a strange dick and they have to. You're it, it's it's definitely a prank though. We can agree on that because there's no way that this is just like oh, I just live in a neighborhood where people are just throwing dildos everywhere. It, is it possible that this is the ninth long overdue biblical plague? <laughs> <laughs> and it's only you. And it's only happening to you. It's very concentrated. Griffin, how about a Yahoo? Sure. <laughs> this Yahoo was sent in by Julie Kin. Thank you, Julie. Julie's been sending us Yahoos for for a while. This is her first time on the show. But I, I think she works at, like, a military base because each of her emails has the word unclassified attached to it. <gasps> As if we needed to know, like, this Yahoo about dildos is not a top-secret government secret. I am not Snowdening right now. 
Thank you. Anyway, thank you, Julie. It's by Yahoo. Did Institute. someone mention Schnorder? Stop no. it. It's no. by no. Yahoo, Yahoo Answers user AJ Foxweather, who asks, All you can eat buffet. Is it worth it? I, I just want to <laughs> dine at a place where you can have pizza and tacos and macaroni and cheese and spaghetti in one sitting. But I've never eaten at one of those restaurants before. Is it worth the price to get in? I also hear that these places are unsanitary and I don't want to get food sickness. Thanks. Ah, uh, food sickness. Is it worth it? I think Financially, if, yes. If we're talking about fiscal, like, I don't think there's... I don't think it could be more worth it. You're talking... Yeah, it's a great fiscal deal. Right. Um... The restaurant you're lo- let's just stop like beating around the bush. They're talking about Golden Corral, right? You're not getting all these things at any other place. Yeah, um, Golden Corral, whose original subtitle tagline was pizza and tacos and macaroni and cheese and spaghetti <laughs> and fuck it and fuck you. <laughs> it is gonna be. Un- I don't think that sanitation. I think when you are a chef. Right, and you specialize in raw oysters. You work very hard, or sushi, or artisanal pizzas. You work really hard to like keep a clean workstation and like get shit done. When you have to crank out pizza, tacos, mac, cheese, and spaghetti in one sitting, sanitation becomes less of a concern for you. Well, I think that you know, the, your answer to everything becomes well. Fuck it, they can eat something else. Yeah. Like, hey, your tacos are bad. I should, they should yeah. eat the pizza. But if you're, call me call me naive, but I would like to think that it has to be at least kind of sanitary to remain open. Or do you think just the authorities turn a blind eye because they're like, uh, I don't think you listen, go there. They, got so, they have so much. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you go there, you're asking for it. I, I mean, think, let's be honest. I think that Justin had a point we're in that the chefs sort of pick and choose what they give the the appropriate time and cleanliness to. Like, you will go to the Golden Buffet and be like, let me get some of that roast rump. And the carver will be like, no, no, keep going. Because that carver... <laughs> no, See, sometimes that agree. carver I, is like a fucking honor guard. I feel like the, the carver... I feel like that's where you're going to get your best quality yeah. stuff because you can put a face to it. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I eat something, it's bad. I go right back to that guy. I'm like, listen, hey, pal. let's sort this out. Buddy. What's this? What's the scoop on the mac and cheese? We call it the cheddar trough. No, like, what's the story? What's the <laughs> story behind it? it? You don't Take want me it. Inside All that. of this was powder a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. We don't remember making any mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure what that were two minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, this golden corral is severely haunted. <laughs> Um, man, that's a fucking cool. I wish I knew that. I wish I knew that fucking ghost in college. <laughs> What's up, dudes? Totally getting high, I see. Let me scoop some of this. Let me scoop some of this bodacious mac and cheese. Yes, the noodles are in the shape of dinosaurs. It's T Rex delicious, my homies. <laughs> now the only thing I require in exchange is your immortal soul. <laughs> Well, give me a case that I can inhabit. I think a lot of, I think it was Golden Corral. There was, there was some YouTube video that made the rounds of this um, young, uh, young man who was a, slander. a whistle, no a whistleblower, a, the the Snowden of roast beef. <laughs> Did someone say Snowden <laughs> of roast beef? <laughs> who filmed a YouTube video of. Apparently, Golden this is his particular Golden Corral location. I don't want to. I don't want to slander Golden Corral as a whole. It's probably just confined to this one thing. Although we all know that it wasn't. He was pointing out how when they were getting their inspections done, everything that was unseemly they hid back by the dumpsters, including like one of those food service racks filled with filled with meat, just like chilling by the dumpster. And he brought it back. Like I don't think this is okay. I'm making a difference in the world. Like we know. Like we, when you, when we cross the threshold of the Golden Corral, we know what we're getting into. We don't need you to put a face to the to the to the beef parasites. Listen, a ship in harbor is safe. Right, right. A stake in my a stake in front of me is doing just fine. A stake in the refrigerator is safe. A stake by the the counter has truly lived. A stake by the dumpster's safety is questionable. (laughs) But you, but YOLO. (laughs) <laughs> you know, uh, Sydney 
uh, uh, my wife is a physician. Oh, um, come on. Every fucking... Yeah, let's all fight wives. Is that what you want to no, do? I, <laughs> no, I, I oh, it's a tell, good old-fashioned wife fight. I want to tell this anecdote. She, she For one of her rotations, she did a... Uh, uh, the health inspections. She not she did them. She she went along with people doing them, and uh, at one of our local restaurants, of which I will inform both of you off the air. Just say it now. Uh, I'll cut it out. Fuck uh, me! I love that restaurant. No, <laughs> I've eaten at that restaurant literally a hundred times. It's a it's it's a it's a hot Mexican restaurant in our area. She goes into the that back. just narrowed it down to one restaurant in Huntington, <laughs> right. Virginia. Uh, she goes well, into Gigi's the back. Well, closed. Yeah, so. and there's there's a. Uh, I know it's not Flapjack Tanapas, the pancake Mexican <laughs> restaurant. That's a real thing in Huntington. Stop by sometime. I'll take you out. Uh, we uh, sh- she looks in the back, and the health inspector is talking to one of the people there, and they are stirring a giant pot of something. With what appears to be a stick, so they ask, <laughs> they ask the, the person doing the stirring what that is, and what they say is a stick, <laughs> and they say, "Is it uh, something you've used for a long time? Is it some sort, of, you know, maybe assuming it's some sort of like seasoning or maybe it's ritual. a maybe it's a very tightly bound bundle of sage." That's a right. Something like that. And they said, no, we found it in the alley. <laughs> you wow. cannot fail your health inspector. <laughs> That's <laughs> the worst. <laughs> the worst. And also, there's a dead guy over there. He's been there for a while. <laughs> Why? Uh. Pardon me. Gar- pardon me, chef. Sous chef. <laughs> Why are you made of diapers? <laughs> Why am I talking to a bundle of diapers with a sharpied face on it? Friends, thank you so much for spending another hour with us. We certainly appreciate hour-ish. you. Uh, hour-ish. In an hourly we're a little neighborhood. under. Slightly under. By the time we get to the end, we'll Yeah, let's probably... just take a long time to do our chores. Thank you for spending a union hour with us. <laughs> <laughs> we sure appreciate it. Fuck. Uh, we, hope, uh, we, we hope you had as much fun as we did. Thank you to people tweeting about the show, like Sissy Puss, Feeney, uh, your good pal Charlie... Uh, Mike Lynn, AZ, Jack Spirak, Jack Kispizarek, uh, Brock Boland, Green Eyed Girl, Mr. Jellyfish, Alonzo Duralde. Um, if you want to tweet about the show, use the MBMBAM hashtag. We also want to give a huge, massive thank you to uh, Operation Supply Drop and all of you who donated to the package, the care package going out to our friend. Tristan Marine and his uh, buddies over there his in platoon. Afghanistan. I mean, I mean, you guys fucking blew it out of the water. Oh my god, they're getting a PlayStation Three, a GameCube, uh, like twenty games, a bunch of four different fucking Pokemon games. These fools are gonna have like half of all. I think it's six hundred fifty-three Pokemon at this point. They are gonna be good to go when X and Y come out, and they are gonna be. They're, they're gonna have a. Fu- they're gonna be fully stocked. Uh, yeah, they're loaded. Um, thank you to uh, companies like Wizards of the Coast, Sega, Sony. Now, what's CDP, a Wooger of the Coast? A Wizard, <laughs> Wizard of the Coast, Ubisoft X. Thanks to Non-Dolph. thanks to Richard who lives on the coast. <laughs> uh, and we want to say thank you to just some of the donors who uh, kicked in. Like <clears throat> here we go: Rachel Borshish, Chad Harrington, James Bronwell, Scott Ackerman, uh, or Ackerman, probably Scott, Scott Ackerman, Dimitri. Dimitri Portnoy, Jared Fulton, Will Gallego, Davin Pavlis, Kenneth Underwood, Philip Prochaska, Brady Bird, Joe Rice, Scott Morse, Jansen Truitt, Julia Lawrence, James Hannon. Thank you so much. Richard uh, Coastman. <laughs> thank you for giving to uh, to Tristan. I'm, I'm sure he and his buddies really appreciate it. And, and we appreciate all of you being so super generous. Tristan, I need you to come home safe. Part... A, because, you know, you're doing the Lord's work over there and you're protecting us and our freedoms and we, we love you for that. But B, you are going to have some some super rare Pokemon from Gen 4 that I am I am I have been negligent in capturing. Um, Basically, this care package is estimated before shipping costs are being worth $3,000. So yep. you're all like... So you're rich. So you're all amazing for for kicking in on that and you're you're the best, so thank you. Um, can I, can I give a shout out? Please. 
I, this is I know this is rare for me, but I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme mm. song. It's a departure, um, which you can hear on the album "Putting the Days to Bed." I believe it's track nine or track ten. It's close to the end of the album to close it down. Um, fuck that album is so so good. Oh, go buy that. It's it's uh, so good that it makes me angry to listen to it. You know, like why isn't all the music like this? Uh, if you want to uh, head over to the forums, talk about the show, we sure appreciate that. And while you're there, listen to the rest of the Max Fun shows. They're all at MaximumFun.org. Like, stop podcasting yourself. One Bad Mother, Judge John Hodgman, Wham Bang Pow, uh, a hit medical podcast called Sawbones that I do with my wife, Sydney, uh, who's a physician, as you know. God and damn it! Curator of the Alley Stick uh, that I am assuming she uh, uh, confiscated. She's not going to uh, shut that fucking... I need that restaurant in my life. I mean, I need it, too. This mystery restaurant that I won't tell anybody about. And uh, if, if you're in Huntington and you want to know, just uh, as far uh, just so you know, I'm going to continue to eat there and have several times right. since I heard the story. Because, so I, I because and we're going to continue to drop hints there, you can get drunk there for like three fifty, <laughs> and you can eat chimichangas the size of your forearm. <laughs> Anyway, and if you uh, if you would like a message uh, right up there along with uh, our sponsors, Extreme Restraints, then just go to maximumfun.org forward slash jumbotron, and you can have a personal message or a business message. Or if you have a company that would like to sponsor the show, then then come on down. Uh, next week's episode will be a little late because Griffin will be touring uh, Ger- Germany. I believe it is. Uh, it's uh, Germany next week. Yeah. Germany next week, uh, and and so we'll be a little late, so we apologize in advance, but we'll still get right back with you, presumably with a very jet lag Griffin, which would be, should be hysterical. Uh, and and thank you so much for listening to our program. If you live in Germany and want to hang, it's a it's a Cologne, super big country. Um, so don't even. I would say probably don't bother. I'm probably probably not going to put in the effort. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, it's a it's a super big country, and I like don't understand any of the languages there. Like, uh, like German. Regardless, Griffin, do you have a last question for everybody? Yeah, I have a final one. It was sent in by Ryan Steiner. Thank you, Ryan. It's by Yahoo Answers user Gisela Juarez, who asks, Have fear to be touched for bald persons? <laughs> uh, this has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.